With another Premier season on the horizon, I've made the short trip from Bath to Gloucester to meet a very special guest. The crowd at Kings, as you know, didn't have much love for me in my playing days, but they certainly do for Jake Pelledry. Jake is one of the best bat rowers in the game today, and after two years out with an horrific injury, uh, they almost cost him his career. I joined him up at King's Home to see him put through his paces in preseason. We'll chat about his recovery, share some memories about King's Home, and how he become a fully fledged Italian. Life after rugby, and the wonderful foundation he is supporting in aid of his brother Sam. As one of the game's global superstars, I can't wait to see Jake again and have a chat up at King's Home. Well, I'm here at Gloucester, King's Home, and I'm with Jake Pelledry. A uh, long time since I've been here, Jake. Well, but apart from doing a bit of recording, but on the pitch side, there's no grass. It's yeah. all the four changed now. a little bit, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> it has. Uh, we used to do a bit of training, but it was never this quality. I mean, do you still get the burns? We do. We do uh, occasionally. Yes, it's very rare, but we do in training um, and in the games. Um, but it's very, you know, it's good. It's, it keeps the game tempo, which is everyone wants. Speedy game, good for the spectators. So um, I quite enjoy it. It keeps the game. Well, you would like a speedy game. Me, a speedy game. <laughs> uh, yeah, in fact, I scored here in a quarter in a semi-final of a, a Gloucester versus Bath. It was a Pilkington Cup back then, or the John Blair Cup. But I scored here, and of course, the famous shed behind yeah. us didn't really appreciate it. You know, the winning try. You know, it was. <laughs> but it again, probably hasn't changed either. Yeah, Unlike the pitch that's changed. Yeah. I'm surprised I'm not getting booing here. Yeah. Or <laughs> but the rain was pouring, and the grass was 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 muddy and it was a different sort of game then but uh, I can't be here without first of all saying you know you've been fantastic for Gloucester but you've had a, a bad two years with injury and stuff and how is it? Give yeah us an update. it's good I, I think I know it was a very serious knee injury uh, not only did I kind of rupture horrendous really. yeah so I ruptured three ligaments ACL, PCL and LCL, tore my calf, kind of completely ruptured my hamstring off the bone, uh, fractured my leg um, which in a normal case sounds horrendous in itself um, but then I also have nerve damage which you know given the extent it's been two years um, you know it's it's now kind of recovered and I'm fully fully back training and fit um, which is good but it's just the nerve side that takes so long um, but the nerve is is frustrating because there's nothing you can do so it's you know you've got rehab for your for your knee you can do all that your gym work and all that but for a nerve it just just recovers on its own and in, in its own way and at its own, own speed time, I suppose. yeah so it's just it's just a very frustrating thing and even to you know when i first did it to look down at my foot and ask it to move and it just doesn't move is, oh, is that's scary it's very scary indeed it's it's essentially um paralyzed for kind of obviously not not the extreme and mine will come back which is very good but it gives you a sense of kind of being paralyzed which is which is crazy even to look down and and ask your foot to move and it doesn't is is just mind-boggling you're back in training now yes back back fully Fantastic. back fully fit and ready for selection and all we've got to do is prove to the club and everybody else out there that you're fit enough to play which but yeah, exactly, yeah. you are but the Gloucester supporters would really want you back because you you've well and Italy to be honest with you I mean you you had you were although they beat Wales without me so, so. well yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll have to talk to you about that but but I mean you must miss international rugby and Gloucester because I mean I played here and it was I love playing here because it was if you're a if you're a forward a front row forward particularly it's the home of shutting up the crowd or yeah, getting the crowd yeah. boo at you you know it was a fantastic atmosphere to come and play here but it must be inspiring for you playing for Gloucester the Cherry and Whites with a full crowd yeah, it's, it's it must be a great athlete. it's it's a historic stadium it's it's yeah, it's, it's crazy like it's one of the only places that I've been to and and you can walk around in the Gloucester and you'll see Gloucester shirts it's normally yeah. it's normally a football or you know that that normally exactly but here they just they, <laughs> the shop must be like horrendously busy they're constantly got their shirts on uh, you can go to the shops or whatever people will pull you at like it's just a, a, a major rugby city and, and people I, love it in my old club who we don't talk about much nowadays because of uh, where they ended up but Bath is the same sort of thing yeah. Bath is just a, a, a rugby city you know and same yeah, as exactly, Gloucester yeah. very similar you know we we got Bath City you got Gloucester City in the football yeah. and they're, they're good clubs awesome clubs but not your premiership or championship yeah, exactly, you know yeah, yeah. so I understand a little bit about that but um, so that last game Italy because there's been a lot of criticism or a lot of doubters saying Italy, Italy, you know, they shouldn't be in the Six Nations, you know, yeah. get rid of them and bring in Romania or, or you know, uh, Georgia. Yeah. 
But I mean, that was a magnificent resort. Yeah, it was not just because it was against the Welsh, right? <laughs> which makes you smile. But no, yeah, it, was, it does. It was it was amazing. Like I was actually there at the stadium um, doing a, doing a bit of kind of media stuff. But the the feel afterwards is crazy. Like I was, you know, it just like you said, you get a lot of you know talk off the pitch or a lot of negativity a lot of comments and you know like we're as players you try and block it out but we we see everything do you know what i mean like if if it goes on social media all the comments everyone sees it so it's it is it's tough to to be on the receiving end of that but at the same time when you when you put a win in like that uh, in cardiff as well um that just kind of shuts everyone up as such and it was it, it wasn't it was the way of the win as well that yeah way of the win the, the way you won you know, it was some fantastic. That last try will go down in history. Yeah, and everything it was amazing, else. wasn't it? And uh, it, it was just breathtaking. And of course, I do feel sorry for the Welsh because we need a, a strong Welsh side in the Six Nations. But more importantly, we need a, a great Italian side yeah, doing yeah. well. In, and, and, and what you've got to try and get back is Italians is you can beat anybody on your day. Exactly. And if you can yeah, get yeah. that, then it always makes the Six Nations nervous. You know, going to Rome, for example, I know you beat them in Cardiff, but going to yeah, Rome, yeah. any good side have got a chance of losing. And that, that keeps the thing balanced in unknown rather than just, well, France winning it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's good because I think, especially against the Welsh, uh, the Welsh, it was, you know, Italy, we, we tend to have this thing of, oh, we played well, but we lost. Whereas now, hopefully, we can build on this and be like, we played well and deserve to win. I think the Welsh game... Well, you did deserve we, to win. Exactly, yeah. So we can kind of hopefully build on that and, and not be a case of, oh, you know, Italy played really well, but probably didn't deserve to win. Or, or you know, now we're getting to the point where that Welsh game, we deserve the win. Well, after that win in Cardiff, the next Six Nations for Italy be huge because everybody will be looking for a bit bit more of the same and you've got because uh, we're doing lots of stuff like Wells are in Rome next year so yep. we'll be looking to take plenty of people to you know you Welshes get over to Rome because it's going to be a cracking game and they'll want a bit of revenge but you know the Italians looking like they came of age in that game and um who's the characters in the side because you you know like in any side international club even down you've got like a spine of players yeah. whether they're just good and quiet like Martin Johnson was good and quiet or you've got the characters you know uh, is there anybody this you know the uh, the joker of, of the changing room or somebody that will inspire you in the middle of a game? I think we, we've got a, a fair few characters and the thing I'd like to just say that the, the difference between it is and this shows you where Italy is as a side I think the characters we've got and the, and the big the big kind of personalities are very young so I think that's you know if, if we if we look at other sides or to in good stead that. yeah exactly yeah so I think if we look at other sides it would probably be towards the kind of more senior players that would yeah. whereas with Italy I think we're, we're at the point where we're building this squad and it is a young squad so like for example you know one of the big players and big you know characters is Seb Negri Seb yeah. Sebastian Negri who's yeah. who's a great player but also a big character in the team and a, you know obviously a big player for us as well um, and you've got Tommy Allen who obviously is now on you know going to the summer tour but um, you know, he did take a little bit of time off when he went to Harlequins, but he's a, he's a massive kind of senior player, and he's got you know stupid amount of caps. So it's it's he he's definitely a big character and, and a big kind of senior leader in in the team. Um, you know, and also we've got um, you know Callum Braley who who yeah, just yeah, recently yeah. Um, announced that he was finishing. All, all with the young, reasonable youngsters, as you say. And the lovely thing about you get that occasionally when the youngsters they might take a couple of poor hide-ins but then they get better and they pull yeah, together as a exactly. team and they grow as a team yeah. you know in in that that holds Italy in good stead you know yeah and I think also if you look you look at our um, nine and ten partnership as well I just want to mention those guys because obviously Tommy's been taking a bit of time so we've got Garbisi and Varney like yeah for yeah. us they're there are kind of as you would say starting nine and ten and you know between them they're like you know 20 21 yeah. 22 well, like, they look pups don't yeah, they exactly yeah you and, know, but they, they play with so maturity you know it and and that can only be great because if you get a nine a young nine in ten yeah. you can afford to have the old boiler it a prop yeah exactly. you know uh, you know a center <laughs> they don't do much now apart from run straight yeah you can build a side around that sort of useness yeah. and, yeah, exactly. and, and uh, endeavor you know exactly and they're going to be involved with the italian setup for the next 10 years yeah exactly. so, so for in terms of long-term plans it's, it's just it's quite exciting and i just really hope now that we as a team build off of the wins like like we talked about in cardiff and and get to the point where like you said before like we're not we're not just winning one we, we, we can win any game yeah. uh and, and well, that's, certainly that welsh game in Rome next year will be a bumper because the Welsh will be coming over in their whores because yeah. Rome's a great city to visit anyway yeah. uh, and a bit of revenge and you already know you can beat them playing good rugby yeah exactly it's going to be a cracker yeah yeah it will Fala be I might try and get to that one yeah. but uh, 
Fella, we'll get to that. One. I'll, I'll come along. <laughs> Watch this Especially space. if you're somewhere around there. Yeah, I will be. <laughs> I mean, have the Italians uh, kept in touch over through your injury? Yes, yeah, so they've been unbelievable. To be fair, so have they? That's so, great. Yeah, so anything from kind of I've got the, the president on the phone, you know, monthly checking up on me, um, all that kind of stuff. Like anything from support, doctors, anything like that. They've always offered, and obviously I live, you know, in Gloucester and and, and in England, so it's 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 a lot harder for, for a normal you know if it was England like you obviously they, yeah, they yeah. can go and see the doctors but for me it'd be a flight so it's as much as they can they, they are so like either that's over the phone and I presume I presume all your medical updates will be sent to their medical yeah exactly yeah. So, they, so they know they exactly what's the, going yeah, on they yeah. keep the finger on the pulse yeah I think that's uh, luckily that's nothing to do with me because I have no idea what I'm talking about so that's that's physio to physio but well, can I say you. when you said when I said when I said what was wrong you went through a lot of letters and a lot of ace, <laughs> blah, 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 completely over an old has yeah. been's head <laughs> Just you, you, know, you know the basics yeah. <laughs> yeah. you got sincerely hurt obviously <laughs> yeah no I, like I know your family and stuff so um when did Italy first approach you and how did they and when did you decide that Italy was your route? Yeah, I think, um, you know, as, as, a, as a youngster, it was the under 20 World Cup that um, did it for me. So I was, I was at Filton College at the time uh, and there wasn't anything from England under 20s. Um, so I kind of went out and we knew someone that was involved in the under 19 setup and managed to get kind of like a trial. Um, and it originally had to pay for my own flight out. Did you really? Uh, yeah, so uh, for the under... I think I it was... I bet you went to your dad feet, <laughs> didn't you? Yeah, I got a chance straight, to play. Yeah, 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 yeah. Straight on the blower. Uh, and then I, I got a, paid for my own flight out, which was fair enough, because obviously they, they had no idea. Uh, and then did a camp. And then from there, it was kind of got selected to go with the under-19s to South Africa. Um, and this was before the under-20 World Cup. And then, then we kind of went to the under 20 World Cup I can't remember what year it was but it was in Italy and um, that's when I first started getting into the setup and I was playing for the Italians and you know we did we did we did reasonably well in that under 20 World Cup because it was a home nation um, and and then we um, and then after that obviously then I, I was kind of um, secured in with the Italian setup and knew a few contacts and that kind of stuff but came back and, and played for Gloucester um, and then Conor O'Shea at the time was in charge of Italy I know Conor Rewell good yes. man yeah so he's a very nice guy like amazing bloke really yeah. good really good at what he does so but he got in contact straight away and was like Jake you know there's an opportunity for you to come over to the Italian setup and uh, this this that and this and at the time I just started playing for Gloucester um, and you know f for me the World Cup was you know the J uh, Japan World Cup was very close by um, so for me it was like you know that 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 could be a dream come true so I took, took the opportunity and, and took Connor up and um, and then we kind of just went from there really I played the first six nations again I can't remember the year but it was in Scotland um, uh, in Rome uh, it was the last game so I got called into the squad it was one of those where I was in the squad but then went back on a, like a Wednesday because it wasn't involved in yeah, the team yeah. and then they had an injury in the last game so it's the last game of the six nations and we just just lost that game uh, to Scotland but that was that was the debut in Scotland all the family came out obviously it was amazing yeah, so it, um, it was very proud yeah it was it was just an unreal experience but that was kind of transition into it and then after that summer tour and obviously um, in, into the World Cup then as well but it, you know it's yeah I mean you're playing for your, a country of, of your ascent you know you're playing in World Cups you're playing in Six Nations yeah. you know you were one of the stars of that Italian side you know why wouldn't you ca carry on playing for you know a great country like Italy yeah know? exactly and, and being part of a process as well right when, yeah, I, when yeah. I first when I first joined as well it was you know Italy were kind of trying to fight to get those wins in the Six Nations and as as the media always suggests it's you know trying to stay in the Six Nations yeah. um, so at that point it was you know a case of being part of something that hopefully we you know we're getting there now and hopefully you we were can... part of something that's bigger than yourself exactly, you know, you yeah. wanted, it was a project that you were you know, they're still working on it yeah and, and I'm sure they want you back as soon as possible to carry on with that but uh, yeah it was a no-brainer for Italy I don't think you know you're playing you know, Premiership Rugby for Gloucester, you know, high standard, you know, it was just, you know, back row is what where, you know, the Italians needed help, if that yeah. was the case at the time. I mean, it just makes complete and utter sense in, and well done the Italians, because what they've done is really clawed you away from an England setup. But, But, you know, what England's like, sometimes they overlook good players, sometimes they get good players and don't develop them, you know, it, so it's, you know, you're, 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 you're playing for a top side in the world so all credit to you and and as i say italy is a young side you feel a part of something bigger than yourself yeah invested growing. into the process right? yeah, yeah and you're growing in confidence in in ability in in the processes there so that's fantastic news well jake you know we talked about you getting in there in that process but and it, how's your italian my italian is not my my italian is very well i'd say 
it's not very good it's good uh it's it's a case of i've done lessons now since my injury so for two years every week um so i'm st i'm trying my hardest Brilliant. it is it is very difficult living in england um that's, that's, what, that's what i was going to say that first training session that first when you walk into a hotel and all the squads there yeah it must be quite daunting when you've got a language barrier as yeah. well you know? it, it is and i think i'm i've I'm learned to know uh, it was originally yes so that is definitely the case but i bet you've learned to swear in italian yeah. <laughs> that was the first thing you do yeah, of course i, I you didn't do. need lessons for of course that you yeah do. Of course it's just one do. of these yeah um but it was it was you know it's getting there slowly um but living there obviously helps which you know some of the a lot of the boys do yeah um but the in in the height like in on the flip side um you know a lot of the boys speak a very good english i mean yeah, we're, yeah. we're as a nation the english are very kind of lazy in terms of languages well we, we are definitely. yes and yeah. we're flip side it's the italians and you know everyone else basically likes to learn languages um so they all do speak english so it's it's and especially when they're on the beers they speak even more english so it's it's never been a problem um but you know it's it's a case of kind of the hardest part is the training because obviously in a game as, as you all know yourself there's not much communication it's either hit that bloke left and, uh, right <laughs> and also with italy they've had a lot of overseas coaches as well yes exactly. so you've yeah. got not only have you got your communication you know with your own players yeah. but you've also got a coach did the coach have an interpreter to get it over or did again he speak sort of broken italian english and everybody sort of understood oh just by the way we're just walking along the shed now the famous gloucester king's home shed. not quite got the roars but no <laughs> or the booze in my case <laughs> um no the, so the, the the coaches um connor to be fair to him spoke very good italian uh, he learns it, um, and that just shows how intelligent he is. Really, because yeah, he, he, learnt, he learned that very quickly. Um, but yeah, like they do, like like I mentioned before, like um, they they all speak English. So it will be a case of slowing down your English yeah. uh, as a coach. But they will speak in English, or if they can, Italian. Um, I think the same same as me now. I think it's it's a struggle to get what you're trying to say across in Italian. If I was to try, yeah. so it's a case of trying to mix it up and and and. If, if I was to try and speak what I was going to say in Italian, it wouldn't probably come across yeah, how I'd like it to. Um, so it's, but you've got to have that confidence and just by doing it, you'll, you'll get there. So it's, yeah. and well, the boys understand, they want you to speak Italian. So it's, you know, it's not just- help you along. Exactly. And, and, yeah. and not only help you along, but they'll, they'll accept the odd little bit of, yeah, yeah. if the word's in the wrong place. Yeah, and they're not, they're not going to stand there laughing because they, they, they um, well, one of two of them will, but <laughs> there's, there's always a case if they want, they want you obviously you to speak it as much as possible. And they want you to be in, in, involved with the squad and be, yeah, be exactly. at home. I mean, we're in a sort of basically the middle of the pitch here. I mean, lasting memories here because you've—I know you haven't played for a couple of years, but you know, one of them was COVID, so it didn't really matter. Yeah, no yeah. fans was here, but that's been wiped. Uh, yeah. Any memories of playing here? What's what's your favourite memory of playing here I in the Coster? I think my favourite memory is uh, my debut. I don't say beaten path. No. <laughs> for God's sake, everybody beats them now. No. It's all so it's my my debut is actually quite a funny story. So um, I was it was in that first year we talked about with Connor. Yeah. And um, so I wasn't selected um, and I was doing some bits in the, you know, like you mentioned the boxes before. So we were doing a few bits up there, but um, Ed Slater uh, in the warm up, I remember it as if it was yesterday, um, was warming up and the, like the subs had the bibs on and he's got his finger caught in a bib and completely like out, like ruptured it, bone out. So- That's unbelievable, how yeah. did you do that? So he, got, he almost, I don't know, he meant to touch someone or something like that and he got and caught, caught in a bib. he ran, yeah. Yeah, exactly, so it just went, snap and um and then i've got this phone call um from brownie uh and it was so at the time brownie was a team manager and it's like oh what have i done wrong do you know what i mean like yeah, well, yeah. i'm in trouble here and at the time i was in the media room eating the uh, bacon rolls that they had left yeah, so uh always good preparation <laughs> so i got the phone call jake ed slater's down we're gonna need you to sit on the bench so i was like I haven't got I haven't got my kit, I haven't got my boots, I haven't got my gum shield, nothing. So And I haven't uh, got no brown sauce for me brown bacon roll. Oh uh, yeah, What's he, going on in he this didn't world? even give me time to finish my bacon roll, so it was you know, and then he's so I've run on downstairs, got I bet I know who you you were up oh, down ready to go. <laughs> I know it, you're keen in your Yeah, head. they found me a random gum shield, which is just great, and then um and then just ran on the pitch and, and was got on within, you know, ten, fifteen minutes to go. So it was quite Oh a, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it was quite a good uh, debut there. It was against Northampton. How did you do it in them ten fifteen minutes? Uh, I was a little bit shook up, but not too bad. I didn't good, have time good. to get nervous, so good, it was. Yeah. It was Sometimes fine. that's the best way. You know? Yeah, Sometimes. just get chucked straight in the deep. Yeah, end. it's when you got when you got a pander on it for a couple of weeks. It's like when you. I mean, I don't know about your international, but when I first heard, I, I, we played Australia in a, a regional game in Exeter, 
and uh, we played and the next game was the, the first test was like three weeks on yeah and they were going off playing different regions i think they're playing the north and then you get the, the nod that you're in the england side like two and a half weeks before yeah you know what i mean and it's changed now because you're in training you know and that's quite for your debut that's quite nerve-wracking yeah talking. it is you it just, is. just want to get on with it you yeah. know so getting in late would have been fine on club rugby as well but uh but it's yeah it's a it's a great stadium so have you, how many have you scored here because um, i told you i've scored one <laughs> and I, sending off over there yeah i've got so no two, idea two i'd have to check the website <laughs> oh you mean you haven't checked you haven't counted your, no your i choice? haven't no no it's, i'll tell you what it's, it's more than one so <laughs> yeah well i uh, believe it or not i scored 60 tries for bath now that sounds like wow you yeah. never did but it was over a 20 odd year you know two a year you know from close range how many were moors Moors, yeah, uh, a couple <laughs> line out drives were pretty good, um, but yeah, mate, most of them were about two a year from close range, um, was about my limit, you know what I mean? So, uh, try to try, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I try and tell people, yeah. <clears throat> but then you had David Saul and Victor Abugu and other props that played with me in the club, you know, they'd, they'd score 20 a year, you know, yeah. pathetic, you know. <laughs> Well, my sunglasses are off from a, a very sunny King's home. I'm now in a, a home changing room. Hey, yep. this, is, this is impressive. They've still got your name up there. <laughs> and I'm under... Not forgotten yet. Ben Morgan, the rampage in number eight. I always fancied being a rampage in number eight here. Fantastic. Well, let's talk Gloucester. I mean, they had a brilliant season last year. And they must have been so disappointed that they didn't actually get over that line the, the you know the top four line it went to the last game of the season yeah yeah we were, we were all sat here like i remember watching the game upstairs um against saracens and we had obviously watching our game and then had the uh, northampton game on on the iphone w watching it as well it was literally touch and go obviously newcastle yeah. had to beat saints um which you know is probably a, 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 a long <laughs> shot <of it. laughs> but uh you know the same, like you said it went down to the kind of the last minute which is which is probably a, you know a very good thing that because the, the Premiership is so attritional and the, the fact that we put ourselves in that position is very good and, and Gloucester, I think Gloucester fans, everyone around Gloucester was very happy with how the season went um, and as, as boys as well, we were, we were over the moon. Um, as <clears throat> as Skims kept saying, it's we, we'd done all our hard work through the season and, and the fact we were, you know, you know, nearly top four is, is a great achievement. <clears throat> he obviously wants to build on that next season and Get into the well, so it's a great, it's a great next running up the exactly, ladder. Yeah. Gloucester's a massive club, but they have not quite no, did yeah. enough to get into the top realms. And it's everybody saying to me, "Oh, sleeping giant, sleeping giant," and they are. Yeah. And I really wanted Gloucester to get in that top four. A because they're West Country, yeah. and I got a fondness for Gloucester. Um, but because they play good rugby. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'll be perfectly frank with you because I'm under no allegiance to anybody. You know, Northampton, good rugby. Arlequins, good rugby. Gloucester, good rugby. Saracens, not so good rugby. And Leicester, a bit between the two, you know. So I was just looking as a pure supporter, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, who was going to go to Twickenham and watch a game. You know, you against Arlequins would have been a cracker. Or you yeah, against yeah, Northampton. Sure, yeah. As it was, the two big, and you said about our attrition, the two big sides that rely on that kick game, kick chase game, field position, mm -hmm. driving people in the pressure. Um, and the, the final was tight, but it was two sides that it kicked more than I've ever seen yeah. a final kick. Two nervous sides kicking. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're like you said there, their game plan and how they play suits knockout rugby, right? Yeah. That's, that's, it suits, you know, 30 games a season or however many get, you know, it, it suits that kind of rugby that they play. Um, and you know, like you said, it's you know, it's it would have been a lot. Like I remember the. Um, but I, I believe, sorry, but I actually believe if a Gloucester, Harlequins, Northampton would have got to the final, I think they'd have won it. Yeah. Big open pitches, big crowd. It was like Quint last like year. Like Quint's last year, yeah. exactly, James. Yeah. You know, and also when Queens played Bristol, the, yeah. in, the, in the kind of what was it like the semis? You so you'd say like the the first leg of the playoff. It was it was you know it was an amazing game. It you know flipped on its head. Nobody knew what was happening, um, and obviously Queens went on to win that year. But um, you know, like you said there, it's just entertaining rugby to watch isn't it? to get through a semi-final is a big one I just felt that if one of them three clubs would have got there the game would have been you know from a, a Saracens Leicester trying to yeah to just drive things against a side that was playing a little bit on, on a wider channel really yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. 10 yards wider yeah which would have been great but uh, all credit to Leicester you know in the end of the day under Steve Borthwick they've come from 
bottom of the table, you know, literally in the last couple of years, to winning the thing. So all credit to Leicester and uh, their supporters in Saracens, you always know, will be there or there again yeah, next year. Yeah. But a big step up for Gloucester. And, yeah. and the boys must be, can't wait to get, uh, get into the season again. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, building on last season is, is only positive for Gloucester. You know, we're going to try and, you know, do a lot more. Anything we kind of, we looked back on the season, we're, we're trying to fix for next season to really push for that top four. So I think if we're not in the top four next season, we'll be really disappointed. I, I, think, you, I think you really, you know, you bridge the gap now. You really need to just maintain and yeah, exactly. consolidate up there. I mean, who's, who was the big players for you this year? Because, I mean, all of them played very, yeah, very yeah. well. So there was, we just had our kind of, you know, the meal and the awards. And <clears throat> the people that came through was Ruan, obviously had a really, really good season. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I think both fans and players play. So um, kind of picked up all the awards. So he, he's been kind of, you know, phenomenal throughout the whole season, uh, whether that's ball carrying or just basically doing the stuff that nobody wants to do really yeah. Car carrying loads yeah, tackling loads a lot of stuff they don't get seen yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. so but luckily uh, the fans saw it the players saw it so he got those awards which is great um, Santi Carreras as well yeah. he got a big mention in, in the end of the season he's been like amazing um, obviously one of the RG boys that came over and, and he's still really young as well but the fact you know when he goes to these international he can play 10 you know wing full back probably chuck him in the centre right back in to do a decent yeah. job as well so it's you know he's been amazing as well and obviously there's there's plenty of others like Lud and Ludlow just to touch well. that on a large season a large season a big season you need players that are versatile yeah exactly you need that yeah. sort of player that can can step in at full back centre of a push yeah. you know you need that because the coaches need that because of it's a long tough season exactly and that, injuries yeah. you know yeah. happen yeah yeah I mean injuries only around the corner right especially coming from my side you, yeah, you, yeah. With, you know, 30 seconds of, a, of an injury can, can cost you two years of your career so um, you know it's, it's like you said for people to fill in I think it's I think it's a bit easier, kind of, you know, back rows, you know, for, for me and, and the boys here, we can all kind of fill in for the back yeah, row. Yeah, There's yeah. obviously special when you're, uh, when you're going so eight, Yeah, exactly. Um, but for backs, eight. it's, it's to, I, I've, I've, I've played back, but from what I see, it's completely different, right? You can't, for, for Santi to be able to fill into 10, fullback wing, like that's three different specialist positions that he can just cover, which is amazing. So I think he's got a lot of credit for that this season, which has been great. I mean, it's interesting because I, I played mainly loose head but I also played tight head for England and tight head for Lions um, and I never found it any problem slifting from left to, maybe because I use both hands to right and whatever but a lot of props nowadays they, they, they can't I'm a specialist tight head yeah yeah never the twain should meet no, you no, know no, no, no. And, and all it is is just different positions different leverage yeah. different everything else uh, so you also need that versatile up front as well. And you also need the versatile from back row to second row. Yeah. So a second row has got some hands and a bit of pace. It yeah, yeah, can yeah. go into the back row and vice yeah, versa. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, it's, it's and crucial. I know, I'm going to see a Ben Morgan and I know he's on occasions had to play second row occasionally. Yeah, yeah. You know, but he's also a good number eight. You know, yeah, so. yeah. It's, it's, it's about filling in and helping helping the side out really eventually. Yeah. like. Um, uh, obviously, like the, the squad needs to go forward regardless of injuries. So for people to fill into places and, and do a good job, like all these boys here, probably play different positions. And and you know, it's it's just about kind of you know, if you sat here between you know the boys that are playing or whatever, it's just about like everyone's in the one drive to just basically yeah. help Gloucester get as far as possible. Do you on a training field? Does Gibbs actually have you changing positions occasionally so that you're you get you know it's not just on the pitch you're changing because yeah, yeah. we always used to train I mean I'm talking about medieval times yeah. back when I played but you know we, we'd, we'd have sessions where you'd actually do live scrummaging out of position you know live live yeah. stuff when you're in a different position so just in case it happened in a game yeah so I think especially for the people that are on the bench uh, I think you've got like for example Bill 12 who, who yeah. very yeah. very much covers 10, 12 uh, and 13 so he, he would then swap in um, according to each of those so like, let's say you know, we did 10 reps in training, you'll do a rep of each at different positions um, and stuff like that. I think, you know, a good example of that is when Johan was here. So um, obviously, you know, pre, pre-COVID, but he used to like a 6-2 split. And because I was quite quick, he used to cover the wing on the 6-2. So obviously you can only have a scrum half and a 10 and the back, then obviously the, the full back or the winger gets kind of shipped off and there's an extra forward. So I used to train on the wing. So I could get used to having to come on as a six-two. Lines of running, yeah. coming, you know, and, <laughs> and just literally being at pace when you're trying to take a ball. Yeah, it's and also playing with the centre, knowing how he passes, when he passes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's very sensible stuff. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot. He's now in Japan, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. 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 But it was it's a lot it's easier. It's his, 
small baby boy missing it? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I imagine he is, yeah. yes, in general, but in terms of rugby, no, I think he's really kind of come into his own. He has, yeah. He's been really good. And you mentioned him earlier, he had a magnificent season. Unbelievable. Some yeah. of the tackling I've seen, but oh, just his ball carrying. Yeah, yeah. And in modern day rugby, getting across that game line yeah. and giving people a focus. He's yeah. Been, He's been huge for you. Yeah, just a, a big bloke that loves carrying. He can do it loads, so yeah. it's perfect. And enjoys it. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the main thing. So Gloucester next year, got a big year ahead of them. Uh, we're hoping, we're hoping, and you're hoping that you're going to be a part of that. Um, you're going to have to challenge some people, aren't you, for your opposition? It's going to be, yeah. You're going to have to be on form in the, in the road, yeah, in the ground sure. running. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You need matches, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, you know, Given the extent that I've been out, I've, I've, I'm under no illusion that that's going to have to be the case. You know, hopefully, kind of prove myself. If if I've got to go off and go on loan or do anything like that, it's not a problem for me. I, I just need to get back. No, you play. won't. You 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 put the hard work in. Yeah, exactly. You get yeah, off yeah. the bench and you'll take your 15 yeah. minutes. But you know, looking at that pitch, that 4G in the sun, you know, there's no better player like yourself with ball handling and the way you play your rugby. You know, you're a modern day rugby player. You're perfect for it, and I'm sure. Uh, Gloucester selectors will be, or skivs will be, will be waiting, uh, hoping that you get back to your best, which we all do as well. Yeah, so, yes. I mean, I can't mm. wait. Even, yeah. even, you know, it's gone from potentially careering an injury to to being, you know, back fit, which it's been a hell of a roller coaster. But even to me, the thought of running out there and and the stadium being. And you imagine good. running out there. The crowd is going to give you such a warm welcome. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be magnificent. Wait. It's going to be like massively emotional. It's been a. Um, a roller coaster for a couple of years, yeah. on and off the field. It's yeah, been exactly. tough, yeah, and, it's, and we'll it's talk been, about that again at yeah. some stage. But uh, it's been it's been a tough couple of years for you and your family. So you know, it's uh, all credit to your character and, and yeah. your strength, really, to to get through all that. Yeah, just need to get back out there now. It's, it's it's the last thing now, just running out on the pitch. So back fit, just to do a pre season now, and and hopefully just you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, as if it never happened in, in September, which would be good. So we're in your in your warehouse, and I'm just looking at tons of kegs and bottles, in cans. New venture? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's something we explored uh, during lockdown, um, which was a long time ago now. But uh, when Still it was relatively short when you look at it. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. In the grand scheme of things, it is. Yeah. So, but in terms of business, it's a new little adventure for us. And yeah, like you said, it's cider and craft cider more specifically. And we've kind of just tried to get it out there really, and we've done really well. I mean, we're sat, sat in a unit now, so it's it's gone. Uh, well to a certain extent um, and now we've just kind of started moving into the canning world and um, and trying to be a bit more sustainable and eco-friendly um, yeah, yeah but it's I mean, going well I, I mean businesses when you start off with an ideal and then, and then but look at this I mean I'm looking at a full-blooded uh, uh, business you know canning machines everything else you know fantastic quirky labels and everything yeah. else and it's great so it's rolling it out and is it just the same cider or we've got different types of cider so we got uh, four different types of blends. So that one you're holding is the, the berry cider. Uh, the original one is the, the blind side, which is um, a, a medium sweet. Um, and then we've got two other bottles, which is our bumper, which is um, a 6%, um, and then also a kind of medium dry, and then a dry that's 4%. Um, I think we try and make it kind of sport orientated. So we've got blind side, which is my old position in rugby. Yeah. Um, and we've got bumper, which is essentially a big hit in rugby. Um, skipper, which is the captain. Um, and then Fratello, uh, more specifically, is, is for my brother, which means a brother in Italian. Um, so that kind of, that, that's where we aim that one. And I think we're, we're based of a craft cider business, so that, that's what we try and push. So our original blends are kind of, the labels are very premium and, and yeah, simple. Yeah, 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 yeah. The new craft cider, Fratello, is a craft cider base with the added concentrates, because that's the only way to make the berry cider. Um, so that's got a different label to it entirely, just completely different branding. But it's a huge market. I mean. Okay, you've got the, the high street brands, we all know them, you know. But so many times now people are going into and they want something different, they want something craft. You know, and, and looking, you say you started small, but I mean, looking at the warehouse, it looks heaving now. So uh, I can see you expanding quite quickly. Yeah, that's just because I like drinking myself. No, no, no. All the profits. <laughs> no, it has, gone, it has gone well. Like you said, a lot more people now, the trend is kind of more kind of local um, and people can get their drink locally and support local, that kind of thing. So we have had a tremendous amount of support, uh, support in the local area um, and people have jumped on board, which is great. And, and like you said, it's, there's a, it's a very saturated market, but I do think there is more of a trend of more sustainable, more eco-friendly and, and support local. Really. Yeah, it is. And, and also, let's not ever underestimate your name as well. You know, I'm sure Gloucester supporters and, and rugby supporters would love to try your cider. And if the product's good, which obviously it is, 
then you're halfway there, you know. So, but it's it's great to see that rugby players are not just on their career. They're also trying to look at, um, you know, other options for their businesses. Because as you know, when you come back from a, yeah. well, I would have said a, a you know, career touch ending, and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. A touch and go, a career ending injury and lockdown and everything else. You've worked remarkably well to get back in. And congratulations on your Gloucester contract. Yes, thank, thank it's you. It's great to see that they can still see the potential and you know the confidence in their loyalty. That's brilliant to see. But it's also good that you're actually, I mean, you're a young pup, you know, <laughs> and you've got a long way to go in your rugby career. But you're setting up a business that is, you know, sustainable and developable. You know, so many rugby players don't do anything, you know, and I think the clubs have got a responsibility to help people get on, you know. Have you had any help from Gloucester or is it just moral support? In I think I think moral support, also the RPA, which are very good. They, they help um, kind of... Yeah pump into you that, that you need to set up a business or kind of look at things other than rugby because like you said I think you know I launched the cider two weeks before I got injured I think I'm right in saying so it was it was already on the cards um, but then just on a good timing bad timing whichever way you look at it but then got injured and had the time to focus on it but it's one of those that kept me on the straight and narrow just because it keeps you busy yeah um, I agree and it's not just starting businesses it might be retraining to be a plumber or a, a charter surveyor exactly, yeah, you yeah. don't have to have your own business you have a career and stuff I mean, when I was still playing, I was involved with sports travel, you know, in, in so, you know, that, then when I finished my playing career, it just carried on. But I, I can't go without saying that obviously that's brother. Yes. And um, I know something that's very dear to your heart and a lot of other people who know you as a family and everything else, you know, your foundation for brother Sam, you know. How's that going? What's what, what's that about? Give us some more information. Yes. On that. So just just based on the the branding as well. So a lot of people wouldn't know this, but it's very subtly like our other branding. So the 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 rugby player is me. Uh, the the reflection is Sam. That's obviously following me playing rugby. Sam is registered as a star on the um, kind of the, I don't know what you call it, the like official um, registry yeah, for yeah, stars. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. My friend Callum uh, Braley actually kind of registered him there. So he, that's Sam there overlooking. We've got the Italian Alps in the background, which is subtle, uh, Italian kind of heritage link. Um, yeah, and then obviously the Fratello means brother, which is kind of subtly, obviously you wouldn't know that looking at it, which is no, what we wanted. It, it means something to you. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So every time I see it, that's what I see. Um, and uh, in terms of the foundation, we've, yeah, like you said, we've set up a... Uh, thank you, yeah, cheers. It took a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so the foundation wise, we've set up obviously the Sam Pledgery Foundation now. Um, and, you know, Sam tragically passed away of a cardiac arrest in, in the middle of town um, on, a, on a Friday Friday night, I think I'm right in saying, or a Saturday night. Anyway, it was, it was busy in town. Um, it was the 26th of, of February. Um, and it was, it was busy around, and there was obviously the, the emergency services are very kind of inundated in that kind of time. Um, and Sam got a defib within uh, six minutes, um, but the, stat the statistics are, um, if you don't get one within four minutes, you know, you tragically, you have 30% chance of survival. Before uh, four minutes, it's 70%. Um, and I th that's a huge difference. <laughs> exactly, yeah, and I'm hoping I've got those stats right. It's around those. Um, it might not be spot on, but that's, that's where it's around. And, uh, and obviously, the, the main kind of message we want to get out is, is the public defibrillators because there are companies that have them um, but when they're private and not registered nobody knows they're sat there yeah. unused um, so when Sam passed away there was five in and around the area uh, but nobody knew about um, and there wasn't a public one available for Sam um, so we've actually now we can actually say we've installed one in Millennium Square Brilliant. for public use so it's there for everyone to use it's locked so when you ring 999 and ask for a defib they'll give you the code to unlock it um, you you know run it over there because every every second counts and that's what we've done in Bristol where he passed away and we, you know we're going to try and get as many as possible because I think the police won't send you there or the ambulance or whoever you, you speak to won't send you there unless it's within 400 meters of, of your radius because obviously it's not worth time it's, yeah. it's rather you do CPR and wait for the ambulance but um, yeah so we're just trying to get as, as many as possible so when you do ring that 999 in those crucial seconds which obviously now we've had to experience that there, there's hopefully one available or you know or people even failing that people know what to do which is like the CPR which is so important um, so we did on the Friday we launched it um, and kind of had the defib on show and installed for the first time uh, we had like the CPR training as well with the Great Western Ambulance Service so um, and you know Fantastic. yeah so we you know it was, it was amazing and um, and it was great for everyone because like, we were handing out free CPR certificates and everything, and it was just educational. Jake, I, I'm a Bristolian, and uh, I, I used to have a 
a music venue down in town and you know I've worked on most of the doors over the years in clubs in Bristol and I'll be completely honest with you ignorantly I don't know where one is in Bristol I know mm -hmm. there's one in Millennium Square now yeah so a lot of it is awareness yeah, 100%, it, it's, yeah. it's not just um, knowing how to use it it's knowing where they are it's yeah. knowing it's knowing what it is and it's getting that sort of information out to the public um, you know and also educating people that these things save life mm -hmm. they're not a thing to spray shut or you know abuse it, it's there for a reason and and as you say the more the better you know if you can get them on every street corner exactly, you'll yeah. be saving lives and, and so yeah. that's fantastic um, um, you know uh, innovating way of thinking of it and uh, so how has it been going it's going well the foundation yeah yeah like we said we just launched that that first defib and it, it's going really well and obviously my mum and dad have been working hard it's been their kind of purpose obviously to deal with the the grief and and the horrible thing that's gone on that's their kind of their purpose and i think now we've got the first one involved uh first one installed sorry um it's a little bit stress relief i suppose and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and then we can sit back and say this you know we've really done it we've got it we've got one and we just want to just get more without being rude how much do these things cost so they're they're around 2100 pounds i think Which, 2150. to be honest with you is it's a small amount if it saves a couple of lives exactly yeah know? even one you know yeah, it, absolutely and and they they have to be um kind of linked up to the electric yeah. um just to keep the batteries at a, a certain temperature so they don't diminish because they they need to be bang on for when someone needs them um there's no point having you know it's like your iphone battery it, it yeah, does yeah, it does yeah. diminish so you need you need to have like that temper con temperature controlled um but like you said they're, they're there for everyone to use and they're so cheap the the initial install is is obviously the, the biggest cost and then it, it, a yearly you know is it, pennies yeah. uh, in comparison it can save someone's life well all i can say jake well done mate you know i'm, I'm so impressed on the way you built this business up when you you know competing with a bad injury as well and more importantly, you know, your foundation, we wish you all the luck, all of Venator, um, wish you all the best, and any way we can help in the future, we will uh, empower Terrell. Cheers, thank you very much.